especially as he starts to grow, uh, go into the game. But you've also got a lot of backline threat as well. So you've got two divers, Marcoon, Certis, irrelevant if he goes all out as well. And then Exekick and Doss are very good at taking care of themselves. So you have a ton of backline threat on SK. It is now down to just about half hit points. There's three Mad Lions make their way. Certis can come in from behind. Doss has hit level six. The final chapter is being read. The fish has been rooted, but the first blood has been secured by Aloya onto Maku. He immediately tried it back as Hesang turned into sushi and Aloya runs for his life. One for one, but the kill goes to Cass. Three items already completed. Aloya is going to drop that Rift Herald in the mid lane. That will answer the question you were posing just a few moments ago. This should be enough to take the tower down as well. And that's actually huge into a Cassidon. And also, as you mentioned, speed the game up, unlock the victor, and make sure that Certus doesn't have a safe lane to fall. Fort Vision gonna give the information to Mad, who will continue to extend that gold lead. And I'll tell you something, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to sit in top four strikes during a team fight. It just doesn't flow. TP was burnt, but Dragon is up anyway, so they're gonna just control that. I think you just give this as SK, get those side lane terrors down instead. A lot of damage onto Marcoon. Zoomies gonna be needed to try bring him back up. Final chapter is available for DOS. Irrelevant is split from the rest of the squad. So he's gonna be trying to push that wave in. Chasey standing toe to toe. The dragon's being burnt down and Certus will arrive in a moment. SK got the first dragon. The second is now likely to go the way of Mad Lions. Irrelevant uses the all out. Dragon is secured by Mad Lions. The final chapter on top of the gravity field and Certus is being burnt down by the Kali. He rift walks away to safety. Flash has been burned. Certus stays alive until the laser takes him out from Niski. So far, it's a one for one, but the dragon goes the way of Mad. They're on the wrong side of the wrong side of the rift. Exekick's doing what he can with that burst. Fire flashes over the wall. Dox will use that dash back in the zoomies. Continues to burn away. Exekick gets out from the laser. Kazi flashes forward. One more shot does it. And now Dox will manage to escape with Marcoon. And this is where we're seeing mistakes in SK. Map on champions like the Talias and the, everything in between that could actually get out and start to move. But with the victor, not exactly a roam heavy champion, but now starting to show his chops when it comes to just raw damage in that control mage position. Oh, someone wants to fight, someone wants to fight. Marcus going all the way forward. The teleport's coming in, but it may be too little. It may be too late. Irrelevant needs to run for his life. As searches is being burned down by Niski. Chased backwards. That's at least one for Exekick. And Chasey can't close the gap just yet. Pushing that wave forward. We still have a 4v4, but it's SK that are low. I was convinced we had just cursed Niski, but a great sidestep means that he stays alive. And once more, Mad Lines starting to push in. It is a one for one trade. It's Look at that. The Gale Force as well has the rapid fight cannon. Certus is low. He's got the cat in his back. Exekick chucked and taken down. There's no place like home. There's, There's no, no place to like go. Home. Certus is next. You can't go anywhere. Caught between a rock and a hard place and a bright alliance. Mad Lions dominate SK. And for Mad Lions, having a performance like this means so much for the fans and for the analysts that are looking at this team. This was a squad where people were like, what are they going to look like? What are we going to see come out from this team? And this is a dominating performance against SK. Now, remember, this combination of players have changed three out of the five from last year. They are coordinating and calculating their plays incredibly well. Starting with Baron at 20 minutes. Irrelevant, no ultimate available to him. Stepping forward. Kazi's going to be dashed away to safety. Chasey's caught at least Marcoon on the back. Cole the Meek is doing so much as Marcoon dashes over the wall. Baron secured plus another kill. Mad Lions are in absolute control. And it all started with that second dragon fight, right? When SK gave over that control to Mad Lions, they are putting their foot down. And Chasey, though, might have overextended that bit too far. Well, let's find out. That's the Rift Walk. Force Pulse uses that Q. Back up comes in. Chasey's got himself one. Continues to hammer away. Will get taken out. One for one. They deny at least one Baron buff, but nine kills to, to see the communication, the mm -hmm. approach to the gameplay, the way that Mad Lions have moved their resources around. Like, you can really see the level of teamwork and cohesion between them as the Dragon secures, and they almost get Certus as well. I mean, it's also been very clean, right? Yes. I mean, there are some moments where maybe in the laning phase they could have been punished, but when it gets this mid-game, they aren't overextending, they're taking it nice and calm, they're playing it the way they should, and this is what I think a lot of people were worried about for Mad Lions, is that they kind of just go, all right, let's just see what we can do here. Let's all in the Mad Lions, because they clean up the fight. Now they get that terror. You've still got that push that had been set up by Chase in the mid lane as well, which Exekick now has to deal with. And again, just taking it nice and slow. Nobody's going that too far uh -oh. forward. And you're just going to be able to set up for more dragons. Marcoon has jumped on. Slice and dice and stuck in place with that.
that Ruthless Predator. Chasey committing the flash as well. They get the tower, they get the kill. Exit kicks. The damage you can output is absurd when the rest of the team is Does there to help again? finish Does it happen again? Does it happen again? Does it happen again? Shh, shh, shh. Not just yet! Irrelevance escaping for now! Turns it back around! Now x is trying to put some damage in reply. He's got himself one, but now Yoya's turning on. Searches is taking out with the help of Kazi. Irrelevance stays alive just a few seconds longer. It's a double for Kazi, going crazy! A third is secured by Niski. A double for Niski. A mad lion's just get so silly. <laughs> They're still chasing. I mean, once they can get in behind them here, they're good. Oh, Kazi. Kazi's a okay. huge okay? bounty. Kazi's a huge bounty. Kazi's a huge bounty, but Niski's gonna be the focus. Kasante's caught inside that gravity field. Kazi's gonna escape with that flash. Niski gets dropped in place by the cease and desist, and Irrelevant stays alive. Another fantastic going golden for Niski. All out will push Yoya away. One, two more kills. Four Mad Lions. A third will fall in just a moment. Markun taken out oh. as well as Kazi. It is an ace for the pride. And they're pushing it to the base of SK. <laughs> I mean, fool me once, fool me twice. That is not going to work out for SK. Mad Lions with picking off all five members for a clean ace. We'll look to end this one out in style. Fantastic performance from start to finish. Mad Lions on the hunt, and Mad Lions dominate SK Gaming. And for everyone watching at home, unfortunately, the death timers on our HUD stopped working just in those last few moments of the fight. We are aware of that as we're testing some new tools. But I think for Mad Lions, again, for me, the biggest takeaway here, the way they played the game and the pretty easy to see understanding and coordination amongst their players that a game plan and they work together to execute. Yeah, and I think that was the big one, right? We saw them kind of...